When we think of rich women, celebrities like Rihanna come to mind, right? Well, the wealthiest women in the world, who are all billionaires by the way, prefer to maintain a low profile. In fact, I didn't even know who most of them were until I did my research. Stay tuned to find out. Number 10. Abigail Johnson we sometimes joke about daddy issues, but Abigail Johnson probably has the opposite, whatever that is. Get this. In 2014, she took over her father's billion-dollar firm, Fidelity Investments. Abigail's grandfather, Edward C. Johnson, created the firm in 1946, and it has been passed down for generations. But what is her life like? Well, she had a lovely childhood, attending some of the finest private schools. In 1984, she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in art history because, you know, if you're rich you can study subjects like that and not worry about how you're going to survive later on. A few years after, she completed an MBA at Harvard Business School. But enough about that. Look at her estate. I think I'd probably get lost in this Milton, Massachusetts mansion. Today, Abigail manages 45,000 employees across the globe, but she's not very fond of publicity. Many people associate her with making smart and bold decisions. Since she took over the firm, her unique abilities allowed the company to regain many lost clients. Her success and firm personality resulted in Forbes listing her as one of the most powerful women across the globe. Her professional endeavors are only one aspect of her life, though. She actually has a beautiful family, a husband named Christopher J. McCown who runs a healthcare information company, and two beautiful daughters. You go, girl. Number 9. Iris Fontbona This 80-year-old billionaire is from the beautiful Latin American country Chile. She is a mining magnet, media proprietor, and philanthropist. It goes without saying that she is the wealthiest person in Chile, but she is also the third wealthiest person in Latin America. The first two are Carlos Slim Helu and German Larea Mota Velasco, both from Mexico. I'm sure you're curious about how she acquired all that money. Well, to put it simply, she had a really wealthy husband. In 2005, Andronico Luxic Abaroa died of cancer, leaving most of his business, Antofagasta, to his sons and his wife. Antofagasta is a copper mining group, and apparently it's one of the biggest mining companies on the planet. This super wealthy family has also wasted no time diversifying their wealth as they've expanded into other industries such as banking, shipping, food and beverages, telecommunications, and agriculture. Iris Fontbona has three main residences, a mansion in her own country Chile, which I think is the size of a mega mall, and two others, one in Belgravia and one in Liechtenstein. But there's more. She manages a resort in Croatia. Fontbona is not too interested in being in the spotlight though. She usually declines interviews. Number 8. Miriam Adelson. Glitz. Glam. Slot machines luck and chance. You guessed it. Our next billionaire woman made her fortune from casinos. But before all this glamour, Miriam studied medicine in Israel, where she was born. She married Ariel Oakshorn, who was also a doctor, but they got divorced and later she had a massive stroke of luck. She met Sheldon Adelson on a blind date in 1991. This was probably the most perfect blind date ever, because he turned out to be the billionaire who owned Las Vegas Sands. He also possessed nearly 50% stake in the casino capital of the world. World. They fell in love and got married. Miriam and Sheldon were strong supporters of Donald Trump and were actually his largest donors. They contributed massive amounts to both of his presidential campaigns. Miriam also allegedly stated that Trump deserves a Book of Trump in the Bible because of his support for Israel. But sadly, Sheldon died in 2021. Of course, Miriam inherited his vast fortune. In addition to all the casino stuff and Trump campaigns, Miriam is also the publisher of Israel Hayom, a newspaper published in Hebrew for Israeli nationals. Number 7. Suzanne Clatton. Ich bin reich, baby. Uh, and that's German for I am rich. Which are words Suzanne Clatton wouldn't be wrong for saying. Clatton, ni Suzanne Quant, is the richest woman in Germany. And here are a few facts I've found out about her life. In her younger days, she studied business, finance, and marketing. She also earned an IMBA from IMD Business School. However, Clatton is not a self made businesswoman. When her father passed away, she inherited most of his fortune. That included his 50% stake in Altana, a pharmaceutical and chemicals manufacturer, and a 12.5% stake in the automobile giant BMW. Like many billionaires, she is engaged in various other business ventures, and she now owns shares in several other lucrative businesses. Suzanne met her now ex-husband Jan Clatton in 1990, and they later had three children. She was involved in a sort of controversy in 2007. Apparently, she was romantically involved with a Swiss conman by the name of Helgs Garby. The scumbag 
Bag threatened to leak photos of their affair if she did not pay him 49 million euros. Although he was arrested after she filed a complaint, he eventually managed to swindle her out of 7 million euros. In 2018, Suzanne and her husband split up for unknown reasons, but uh, I guess the affair had something to do with it. Number 6. Gina Reinhardt Reinhardt is the executive chairwoman of Hancock Prospecting, a mining company which was founded by her father, Lang Hancock. However, her story is a bit different from others, because the company was bankrupt when she inherited it. Reinhardt worked tirelessly to transform the company, and right now, it is the largest private company in Australia. She made a fortune and was able to invest in other areas. She even bought some cattle stations. Her life is not completely drama-free, though. Her first marriage was to a man named Greg Milton. They had two kids, John and Bianca. That marriage didn't last too long, and later she married Frank Reinhardt, a corporate lawyer and executive. Reinhardt had two more children. Hope and Gina. She has had a turbulent relationship with the children from her first marriage, and most of it concerns inheritance and position within the company. I was surprised to find out that she attended neither of their weddings, and it is clear that she seems to favor her younger daughters a lot more. Number 5. Jacqueline Mars Ever wonder who owns most of the world's favorite candy? I'm referring to Snickers, Twix, M&M's, Milky Ways, and uh, you guessed it, Mars Bars. Meet Jacqueline Mars, the world's biggest candy maker. Her grandfather, Frank C. Mars, actually founded the Mars Candy Company. Like most of these billionaire women, she's been married more than once, and she has three children. But don't expect to find out much, because this family is quite mysterious and works hard to protect their privacy. In addition to candy, this company owns some major pet food brands, like Whiskas, Pedigree, and Royal Canin. Jacqueline's estate in New Jersey has been listed for $2 million, and she also has residences in Virginia and Washington. All sunshine and rainbows, right? Well, it gets a bit dark. In 2013, she allegedly fell asleep while driving her Porsche and hit a minivan. This resulted in two deaths and several injuries. The ups and downs of life, I guess. Number 4. Mackenzie Scott Scott became the third wealthiest woman in the United States, and the fourth wealthiest woman in the world after her divorce from Jeff Bezos, founder and executive chairman of Amazon. She came from seemingly humble beginnings. Her father was a financial planner, and her mother was a homemaker. She married Bezos in 1993 and was actually one of Amazon's first employees. She played a very influential role in its early days and took a step back when it began to do really well. They had four children, including a daughter who was adopted from China. She always loved writing, and this led her to pursue a degree in English at Princeton University. Famous novelist Toni Morrison described her as one of the best students she'd ever had. Her debut novel, The Testing of Luther Albright, won the American Book Award in 2006. Scott tries to use her wealth for good and engages in several philanthropic activities to charitable organizations. In 2020, her charitable giving was about $5.8 billion, and this was one of the largest annual distributions by a private individual to working charities. Number 3. Julia Koch. My first thought was, wow, she doesn't look 60 at all. And then I remembered that money can fix everything. In the past, Koch graduated from the University of Central Arkansas, then worked as a model. She had a love for the fashion industry, which was probably influenced by her parents who owned a clothing store. She worked as a fashion designer for some time and even did fittings for Nancy Reagan. In 1991, she met the man who would someday cause her to reach a billionaire status. What's hilarious is that she met David Koch on a blind date and was not impressed with him at all. This certainly was not a case of love at first sight. Somehow, she decided to give him a second chance and they started dating seriously. In 1993, she quit her jobs and in 1996, she married David. In August 2019, her dear husband husband passed away. Julia and their three children inherited 42% of the company. Right now, Julia has three residences, but is planning to sell her apartment at 740 Park Avenue. You wanna buy it? Number 2. Alice Walton Alice Walton is the daughter of Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. She was born in Arkansas and spent most of her childhood there. She completed a bachelor's degree in economics and started her career as an equity analyst and money manager. In 1988, 
She founded an investment bank called Llama Company. She was also influential in other roles. For example, she helped with the development of the Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport. I think it's fair to conclude that Walton was actually quite hardworking and didn't sit around simply waiting for an inheritance. Her love for art led her to be influential in developing the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. Walton has also been involved in several car accidents. In 1989, she accidentally hit and killed a 50-year-old woman. Number 1. Francois Betancourt Myers And our winner, the richest woman on the planet, is none other than, drumroll please, Francois Betancourt Myers. Her wealth comes from our world's obsession with beauty and cosmetic products. Her grandfather, Eugene Schuler, founded L'Oreal, and her mother, Lillianne Betancourt, was a French heiress, socialite, and businesswoman with many shares in the company. She passed away in 2017, and this caused Francois's fortune to triple. She was raised as a strict Catholic. She married a Jewish man and they raised their two sons as Jewish. The weird twist to this story is that Francois's grandfather went on trial for collaboration with a Nazi government, but her Jewish husband was actually the grandson of a rabbi who had been murdered in Auschwitz. Interesting, huh? Francois is so invested in her religion that she has written several biblical commentaries. After the Notre Dame Cathedral fire in 2019, she donated $226 million towards its repair. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, click the one on the screen for more, and I'll see you there.